Since the ROG Ally launched last year, it's reportedly sold over half a million units, giving manufacturer ASUS a genuine competitor for the Steam Deck. And it's easy to see why this handheld PC has done so well. It runs a wide variety of game launchers, allowing for a diverse catalogue of games. And AMD's Ryzen Z1 processor makes it one of the most powerful handhelds on the market. In this video I'll run through my experience with the device after 6 months of play, including the advantages and disadvantages of Windows, and the screen, battery life, build quality, performance and more. If you enjoy this video, likes and comments are greatly appreciated. You can always sub to the channel for more like this, and I'll let you know about the channel's Patreon at the end. But let's start off with the unit itself. It's quite a chunky handheld, but I still find it more comfortable to hold than the lighter, smaller Switch. And I'm pretty picky about screens, but the ROG Ally's IPS panel is crisp and bright, displaying games at a 1080p resolution and 120Hz refresh rate. And while it's not quite as vivid as an OLED screen, it's really not that far off. As for the controls, the sticks are a little soft and don't offer much resistance, but they work just fine. They have RGB lights as a cosmetic flourish, although I found them a touch distracting and turned them off pretty quick. The face and shoulder buttons feel identical to an Xbox controller. There's a decent D-pad and various well-placed function keys that you can program to take screenshots or reveal the desktop at any time. As for audio, it has front-firing speakers that offer surprisingly high-quality sound. I was quite surprised at the effectiveness of their directional audio, and it has a headphone jack or you can connect to Bluetooth easily. All in all, it feels great in the hands, it's really well put together, and it looks and sounds just great. But next let's talk about battery life, which has been a big talking point with this device. And that's because it doesn't have much. There are three power profiles that you can switch between depending on how heavy the game is. Silent mode is great for lighter games like deck builders or pixel art type stuff. Then there's the medium performance mode and turbo mode for the most heavy 3D games. Those higher modes will make the fans kick in to cool down the chip, but they're relatively quiet and heat is directed away from the player by the vents on the top. But even so, you only get about 90 minutes of play on silent mode, and you can half that on the higher power profiles. And how this affects you really depends on how you use that ally. I use it in the house 95% of the time, so I'm never far from a power socket. And I did also pick up a power bank that will stretch the battery life to 3 or 4 hours, which made it viable for short plane journeys and the like. But if you are someone who likes to play on the go more regularly, the Switch or the Steam Deck are probably your best bet, offering something more in the range of 4 to 10 hours of play. But with that power consumption comes a big leap in performance from those other two devices. I've played a variety of games on mine, from super lightweight indie titles to some of the heaviest 3D games on the market, and performance comparisons are where the ally really excels. I'll give you a few example games. Lies of P is one great example. It's a visually impressive Souls-like, and the ally's performance mode handled it without issue. The draw distance and visual effects were similar to what I was seeing on the Xbox, and I barely had to tweak the settings at all. It took a bit more effort to get good performance out of Assassin's Creed Mirage, which launched on the week I got my ally, but I was still impressed by how well it ran. I did have to drop it to 720p and low settings to get smooth gameplay, but on a smaller handheld screen, low textures and shadow clarity looked just fine. I was also very impressed with how the excellent 2022 indie game Stray performed. On turbo mode it runs the game comfortably, with the game's atmospheric lighting and high detail environments perfectly intact. I did find its limits though in more demanding and less well-optimised games. Forza Motorsport, for example, was heavily compromised. It didn't run smoothly on any settings, and it was missing textural detail that made the road harder to read, and low crowd density stripped the sense of occasion from the races. The same could be said for the famously demanding game Cyberpunk 2077. It has a great suite of customizable options, but dropping crowd density is essential to get it to run well, and when you cut down the pedestrians and vehicles, I found that Night City felt kind of empty. I missed the teeming crowds and busy roads that are central to the city's appeal. But I think a lot of this stuff comes down to personal taste. I like to see grand open worlds on a big TV or a monitor anyway, to better soak in the atmosphere. But any version of Cyberpunk running on a handheld is a minor miracle, so depending on how important fidelity is to you, you might be perfectly happy with what the ally can do. I think another make or break factor for many people will be the Windows OS. It has some big advantages, but also big disadvantages. To get the downsides out of the way, Windows is really not well optimised for touchscreen devices. It has a lot of quirks and it can act in quite an unpredictable way. The Armoury Crate software that is central to the Ally experience is pretty good, but it can be eccentric because of Windows. Sometimes it opens full screen, sometimes windowed, and it doesn't always work well when the device comes out of sleep, so I tend to power down the Ally completely for a fresh restart between sessions. I think this depends on your use case, for example if you have kids to look after, or you get interrupted a lot for other reasons. Sleep and quick resume might be important for you, and the Ally doesn't do any of that stuff at all well, with games often behaving strangely when you wake the console up. 
and there is some upkeep involved. It's constantly running updates, and if you change resolution, it will mess up your desktop, even forgetting your wallpaper sometimes. But if you can put up with all of that, Windows has some really big advantages too. Unlike Steam Deck's Linux-based OS, the Ally runs a wide variety of PC games for Windows. And that includes Xbox Game Pass. You can run most Game Pass titles natively with cross-save to your console. And as someone who plays a lot of Xbox and doesn't have a big Steam library, that was a massive perk for me. It's basically a dream Xbox handheld. I've also tried out streaming games locally from my Xbox. If you try this, make sure the Xbox is wired to your modem to minimize the use of Wi-Fi. It does still create a small amount of input lag, but even in action-heavy games like Armored Core 6, I had a pretty good experience. It also runs the Epic Games storefront, so you'll get free games from week to week, and anything you pick up on good old games or itch will run just fine. So to round things out, the Ally is a powerful, high-quality PC handheld that definitely has some advantages over the Steam Deck. Most of the games that I've played ran really well. The screen, the speakers, and the build quality are excellent, and Windows makes it a very versatile device. But it really does depend on what you're going to use it for. The poor battery life makes it a non-starter for people who play mostly on the go. And the general quirkiness of Windows 11 means that it's not a fully console-like experience, which really matters if you play in short bursts, and especially if you make heavy use of quick resume. But for me, it's proven to be a truly excellent device. I've logged hundreds of hours in a wide variety of games, and to my own surprise, I found my Switch, PS5, and Xbox all gathering dust, because the ROG Ally has become my preferred go-to video games platform. I hope you found this review useful. If you did, likes are appreciated, and let me know about your opinions or experiences with the Ally or the Steam Deck in the comments. And please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you'd like to go a step further, there is a Patreon also. You can join for a dollar a month to get access to the Gaming in the Wild exclusive Patreon Discord, and you'll find all kinds of free content there as well. But that's it for this review, so take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you on the next one.